Welcome back to another update, monthly update, monthly favorites, you know. June is over guys. June is gone. June, June, June just left us. Can you believe how fast this year is going? And I think um, from now on maybe I am going to start giving spoilers about the things, the shows and movies that I watched during the month because at least this time, I want to share something about a movie, but the first movie, okay. First movie I watched uh, in June was always... I freaking love the movie because I love Ali Wong so freaking much. I love her stand-ups and when I saw that she made a movie, I was freaking out. My favorite part is the internet's favorite part, which was every single scene with Keanu Reeves, okay? Let's just... He's our baby, he's our boyfriend, he is our love. We love Keanu. It was a great movie, I loved it. I love romance and I love comedies and I love rom-coms. So, it was a great movie. Absolutely loved it. And the second movie I watched, oh my god, okay. This movie though. Uh, it's called La Vie and Rose. This is kind of weird, because, I mean, I speak Spanish. Used to speak Spanish only, I now speak kind of English. I studied Japanese. I am still obsessed with Japanese. I already forgot everything. I could speak Japanese the way I'm speaking English right now, but when I started practicing English, I totally forgot my Japanese. I still understand some of it, but I, I forgot everything. Uh, so this is kind of weird, but one of my favorite singers is Edith Piaf, which is the, I guess, protagonist of this La Vie Rose movie. She is a French singer. Uh, ever since, damn, I don't even know, 2000, 2005, I think, 2006? Between 2005 and 2006, I discovered, because I used to collect, I love collecting things. So I used to collect, um, it was like an agenda, but it had a theme, right? It, the theme was Pasqualina. I still love it so much, and I would love to keep collecting it but we don't get those agendas anymore here and journals agendas i don't whatever we don't get them anymore here in my country last one i got i think it was 2015 and i bought it i asked a friend i sent him money to mexico so he could get me the the journal slash agenda and he sent it to me in the states where i was living at um so that's the last one i got and i hate it so much breaking my collection because i've I have been collecting the agendas ever since 2005 and uh, they started coming out with a new, with like a special edition where they were printing again the agendas slash journals. Since they started, like uh, they started in 1991, so I got the 1991 one, the 1992 one, uh, then I left the country again. Keep collecting them and then you guys it's hard to collect things and be poor in another country and having come back here and you know now I get it whatever this story what am I doing? <laughs> Love you and Rose. Uh, in the agenda slash journal there was a, like a little comic book with a story ever since 1991. And this girl in 2005 had a boyfriend because it's about a girl named Pasqualina. She had a boyfriend and they had the agenda slash journal. <laughs> they, they had a website so I would always go to that website and see more Pasqualina stuff. Um, I was obsessed. I still am. I love Pas Pasqualina. Uh, and they, they had like a little radio or something and it said our song, like the couples like hers and the boyfriend, and the song was, I don't, I'm not even gonna attempt to pronounce it because it's in freaking French. But ever since I heard that song, because they had the lyrics in Spanish, ever since I heard that song and read the lyrics, I 
got obsessed with Edith Piaf. I just loved her from day one since I heard the song and I don't know why I didn't know this movie even existed because it's about her life and everything she went through since basically day one since, since she was a little girl the way she grew up the way she was raised the way she became famous and it was freaking amazing and the actress I don't even know her name but the actress that plays her they did an amazing job with the makeup she was she looked the freaking same and even though the movie is called La Vie and Rose we all know that song if you don't know the song then what are you doing with your life? Do you live under a rock? But my moment was when she sang that song. The song I love since the first moment I heard. My favorite song of her. It was freaking amazing and perfect. And I love like the movie lasts almost three hours. And I was just so happy the whole time watching it because I yes, I said I love the singer, but I didn't know really anything about her life because she's been dead for years. Uh, it's not like Frank Sinatra, you know. I love Frank Sinatra so much and I have books about his life and biographies and I, I read a lot of things about his life. But with the things, I never really cared about reading about her life. And I really regret that because watching this movie, seeing everything she went through, wow, that woman. Freaking love her. Freaking, freaking love her. In a Frank Sinatra level now. And the fourth movie I watched was Toy Story 4. Now, this is the one I wanted to s talk about and, you know, say some spoilers. I love the movie because memories, because my childhood. I cried so hard because my childhood. But after like a few days passed, I started thinking. It's definitely not the best movie and they should have just stayed with three movies instead of adding a fourth one just because money. Bo wasn't in the third movie. They could have just come out with a short or something, not a whole movie to tell us what happened to her. I hated the fact that Bonnie just stopped playing with Woody because freaking Andy told her, like he gave her Woody and was like, this is my best friend, please take care of him and then she just fucking forgets about him? No, no, I didn't like that. I also didn't like that they made Buzz look like an idiot. Like, oh, my inner voice and pressing his button. Like, he's not stupid. He knows he's not a toy anymore. He knows what your conscience is. You know what I'm saying? They made him look like an idiot and he is not. In Toy Story 2, when they split and they go with the other bus and this one has to go all the way to the apartment and rescue Woody and shit. He is not stupid. They made him look so stupid. They made the whole movie about this new toy, which was trash, let's just be honest. And we barely saw the team, the, you know, Jesse, everybody else. We barely saw them. So, yes, I cried. Yes, I loved it. Yes, I cried even harder when I heard uh, the song uh, You've Got a Friend in Me. I was thinking about the name in English. But it's definitely my least favorite Toy Story movie. Hate it. Hate it so much that they made Buzz look like an idiot. He was not an idiot. Hate it so much that the team had to split up. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna make, like, Toy Story 4 is like a different universe or something because anyways on the shows that i watched this past month the first one was chernobyl which i just finished it yesterday because i was watching it with a friend but he can't come over all the time because i have to film and edit and stuff and that takes freaking time so i only have like weekends to do whatever the hell i want um so I started watching the show with him because if I don't react to a show or a movie or watch it with a friend, I just won't watch it. I'm just being honest here. So I started watching it with him and then I didn't really have much time to continue it. <laughs> I know it's only five episodes, but yeah, we barely just finished it yesterday and I seriously loved it. And what's up with those people who are asking for a season two? Like, did everything good at home? They are like, 
Why are you asking for season two of Chernobyl? Are you are you okay? Really enjoyed it. I heard about what happened in Chernobyl, like everybody else, but I didn't really never uh, looked it up or anything. I didn't know how it was, why it happened, how bad it would have been if they if it spread and all this stuff. So it was very interesting. It was very very interesting. Second show I watched was Agretsuko season two. Freaking love Agretsuko. I feel so related to her. Love her. And season two was just freaking perfect. If you haven't seen Agretsuko, please give it a chance. You're not gonna regret it. Even if you don't like anime or cartoons or stuff, you're gonna love it. I know it. I feel it. Watch it. Third show was Jessica Jones. I watched season two and three in a sitting because I knew that if I stopped, I. I would never freaking finish it. I watched it season 3 without thinking that it was the last season, so <laughs> the last episode I was kind of sad and I stayed kind of sad for a few days because that was the end. That was the freaking end of it. It was so good. I loved having David Tennant for some psychotic moments and I kind of didn't love that the last villain was Trish, but you know, I guess it fitted the story, whatever, they had to end it because it got cancelled. And the fourth show I watched was Fleabag. I decided to watch it, <laughs> funny story, again, another story. I decided to watch it because I love the Graham Norton show, right? Um, and I guess a few weeks ago, Andrew Scott and Paloma Faith and I think Tom Hanks? No, no. Well, I don't remember who else was there, but Paloma Faith and Andrew Scott, and they were talking about Andrew's character here in Fleabag being a hot priest and stuff, and then Paloma mentioned that in a certain episode with him, she masturbated or something like that. She said it in freaking television. She's crazy. I love her. Uh, and Andrew was kind of uncomfortable. <laughs> But anyways, uh, yes, he's a character in Fleabag season 2, so I decided to watch it because Paloma said that and I was like, I need to see this scene to see what the fuck is going on because I know she's crazy, but she can't be that crazy. So I watched season 1 in like a sitting. It's a very short show. It only has 6 episodes and every episode lasts like 20 something minutes. So it was pretty like to watch during a weekend. Um, so I watched season one and then I was like, yes, I'm finally here, season two, I'm gonna see what the big deal is about with Paloma masturbating to Andrew Scott being a hot priest. Let me tell you, it wasn't what I was expecting, I guess, maybe because, well, I'm ace, so I never really felt the moment to be, oh my god, I guess like Paloma did, but it was a pretty intense moment. It was very hot. Andrew as a hot priest, 200 points to Gryffindor, loved the show after I finished it and I realized that it was the last season because I had to look it up, I was like this cannot be the last season, please give me more. It was the last season, I felt so sad, so freaking sad, I still feel sad, I decided to rewatch it a few episodes last night with my friend because after we finished uh, Chernobyl, we were gonna watch another show called Bolivar, which is about the, um, I don't know, something, Venezuelan history, whatever. Uh, but I decided to show him Fleabag because I love the show so much. It's right there with Sex and the City and Doctor Who, so just so you know how much I love the show. Uh, and even though it's not his type of show, he said he really liked it, so I'm gonna him to watch the rest of the show. We only watched two episodes. Uh, but yeah, loved it so freaking much. You have no idea. And last favorites are two things. The first one is music and it's a song by Todrick Hall called Nails Hair Hits... wait... yeah. Nails Hair Hits Heels. Being obsessed with the song and with the music video since it came out. I love it. I freaking love it. I listen to the song every time I go to take a shower because, I don't know, it makes me feel freaking fabulous. And the last, last, last favorite was I released, finally, 
some videos I have been working on since pff, last year or something and it was my Sensei tribute the anniversary of Amor Vincit Omnia sorry if I killed it uh, was in June 7th June 8th? 7th between those days so I was asked to release the, the videos that day for the anniversary, which I did because I I interviewed Michael X. Somers and Sandra Fish, which are two characters uh, from Sense8. I interviewed the actors and and I interviewed some fans and I got like a fan video of fans saying how much Sense8 meant to them and all this. Because uh, we've been fighting for a third season for a long time, so I decided to use my platform that even though it's pretty small, I wanted to help them. I wanted to, I don't know, I guess bring more people to watch sense and fall in love with the show and help us get a third season. Uh, so I released the videos that day and yeah, if you haven't seen them, then please go watch them and um, I'm so thankful to everybody who helped me because I never really thought I would interview actors like I thought about it, like what if, because uh, at least some channels that I follow that are in Spanish, like some Mexicans and Argentinians, they interview actors to when there's a new movie coming out, like there is this YouTuber I really like who is also a voiceover actor who interviewed um, the cast of Dark Phoenix a little bit ago, so I was like what if my channel ever grows to be slightly as popular and I get to interview famous people and was like, fuck no, I would never, I could never, I, I'm too nervous, I'm too anxious, I can't, but I did, thanks to the beautiful Sensate family, I, I, I almost died that night because I was so nervous, I, internet was just so slow and the, the, the call was a mess, but I did and it was thanks to the Sensate family. It wasn't even in person. I didn't even have them in front of me and I was so freaking nervous. I could feel my heart right here. Will I do it again? I seriously doubt it. I don't think so. I can't say no, but even though I loved the experience, like I'm so happy I did it. I'm so thankful to the people who helped me get their emails and stuff. The moment I was doing the interview, I even wanted to puke. So. I think I'll be able to do it again, <laughs> but we'll see. Anyways, those are all of my June favorites. Um, let me know if you watched any of the movies or the shows or anything. And yeah, thank you for watching this video. And as always, I'm Sarmiana, and I'll see you in my next video. I am Peter Pan. I'll never be a man if you never wanna grow. Take my hand, I'll take you to Neverland. I am Peter Pan. I'll never be a man.